Ungefragt. Hello everyone, you are listening to You've Got Five Options show on Ungdoms Radio. Tune in at 98.7 every Monday and Wednesday at 11.30 and every odd Friday at 2 o'clock. Join us while we are solving yet another life challenge and if you decide to share your problem with us, yours can be next. Hello everyone, this is Marta and this is Anna and we are back on You've Got Five Options show. Yes, and Lasse is here with us. Lasse, say hi to prove it. Hi. Yes, that's Lasse and we would like to welcome you on this wonderful Wednesday almost afternoon with the second part of uh, Tobias challenge. So if you have listened to us on Monday, you know that we are solving a challenge of a guy named Tobias. If you have not, then please go to our YouTube channel where you can find all the archived episodes of our radio show and you can subscribe for free. So you are always updated. Or if you are more of a podcast listener, you can also find those uh, challenges in a form of a podcast. So you can either do it directly at our website, the5options.com, or you can find it in your podcast app on your uh, mobile or iPad, etc. So many options here. Many options. Yeah. But now we will tell you what has happened with Tobias. Mm -hmm. And uh, Anna, if you could just read Tobias's challenge so that all our listeners remember exactly what it is about. Yes. So uh, the challenge is, I would really like to start my own business. I know exactly what it will be and I have well researched how to deal with all the practical things. I have consulted a mentor with my business plan and it all looks really solid and promising. Yet. I am stuck. Even though I have my resignation form printed and signed, I keep on second guessing myself. I have been procrastinating telling my boss. He's such a lovely gentleman who has been a great manager to me. I really don't want to disappoint him. It's very difficult to say goodbye to my good colleagues and the nice routine I've developed over the years. I feel that I'm missing the self-confidence and the trust that it will all work out. I am also quite a shy person and I have no idea how to overcome that as I will have to do the networking and reach out to potential clients. Do you have any good tips for me? So um, in our first episode, we have told uh, Tobias that we have, we feel that he's really ready to move on and he has to go through that transition from the old self to the new self. And we have proposed to him to say a couple of solid goodbyes and a few good hellos. And we have discussed in a great detail the first goodbye, saying goodbye to your boss. And we have concluded that it's a similar scenario as saying goodbye in a relationship that was good but no longer serves us. And today we will be looking into saying goodbye to your old life and routines, saying hello to your shyness, saying hello to your self-confidence and saying hello to the trust. Yes. Thank you now, Anna, for being the great confirmation. Uh, I had to repay it from the Monday's episode. So, yes. Amen. Fist bump. Yeah, we, you know, like we are best friends, so we can count on each other. And there is a strong yes. Yes. Lasse, can we get a yes from you? Yes. Okay, that was strong as well. It is very strong. It seems that Lasse wants to be our best friend too. Yes, I thought <laughs> that he is our best friend already. No? I, I thought so too. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> so it's me. Okay. I'm sorry. Maybe I just <clears throat> shut That was awkward. Lasse, okay. are you subscribed on our YouTube channel? Yes, yes, I, I am. Awesome. That's how we make friends. That's why how we recognize friends. And one point to all of my friends, if you are really my friends, then you are already sus subscribed, guys, on the YouTube channel. And if you are really my friends, then not only you have subscribed to the YouTube channel, but you have made at least five of your friends to subscribe to our YouTube channel. Whoa! You know, it's not easy to be my friend. <laughs> 
<laughs> Apparently, huh? No, <laughs> no, Marta, it's you who is rejecting us, you know. Last I thought he's our best friend and you're like, eh. Okay, guys, you are my friends. I am a very friendly person. It just, I just don't show it always. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's awesome. Maybe you have a challenge. So saying goodbye to your old life and routines. Well, Tobias, it seems that that job that you have had was like really nice. You've had a great manager, you've had nice colleagues and you developed some nice routines over the time. And it created that nice comfort zone where you were feeling fine, but you no longer feel all that fine there because you have printed out your resignation and you are just waiting on how to do it. So basically, we wanted to talk to you a little bit about, you know, just saying goodbye to your old life and welcoming the new life because we people need to grow. And for a while we can be in our comfort zone, but it will actually create discomfort over time. The challenge here is, of course, that when we are about to grow, we also feel discomfort. Yeah, and I think that this is one of those things that we simply have to accept. Yeah, and that's something that this discomfort, you have two types of discomforts, right? When you have to grow, where you have to take that big step into the unknown, your brain freaks out because your brain considers a new situation as a danger. So, of course, your brain would like you to stay safe, efficient, because our brain is primitive. Our brain wants us to stay as secure as possible. But there is more to us than only the brain. And the reality is that we people need to grow. And that growth comes with a discomfort because it's unknown, because we don't know how it's going to end up. But when you have found yourself in discomfort place in your comfort zone, then you have to weigh these two types of discomforts. You can have the one in your comfort zone that is safe, but you feel you're not growing, you feel probably un unmotivated, uninspired, and you have maybe a little bit scarier discomfort on the other side of the growth and going out there and reaching out for your dreams. So you just kind of have to right now weigh which discomfort is actually biting your ass more. <laughs> <laughs> what if the discomforts are biting the both butt cheeks? <laughs> And it's hard to <laughs> estimate. Okay, that was just a wild thought I have. Lasse, what do you think? Is it possible? <laughs> <laughs> Commercial break. So anyway, the thing is that... <laughs> <laughs> How do you want to smoothly go from <laughs> to discomforts? Biting your ass cheeks to, to ass cheeks. Sorry for my language. <laughs> but cheeks to this. I will tell you, okay. I can make it. Just I can make, make a smooth transition. Yes, do it. So if you find yourself at a point of time where you feel both of them are biting you in the same level, yeah, probably you have to do some exercises uh, or maybe you have to give yourself a little bit of time to figure out. But what I wanted to tell you is that discomfort inside your comfort zone is not taking you anywhere. Mm -hmm. And the discomfort that is about the one about growing and going out of your comfort zone, it's maybe more insecure, a little bit more scary, but it's actually the one that can take you somewhere. I was actually having a thought. Congratulations. Thank you very much. I am also amazed by myself. Such a good friend, right, Lasse? Uh, so my thought was, because you mentioned about the fear from the unknown, which is a pretty, uh, I think, obvious link from the fact that, yeah, our brain wants to keep us in a comfort zone because then it's the most efficient, it keeps us safe. What if Tobias will have 100% guarantee that his business idea will work, he will get money and he will be successful and it will be in a year, everything will work. Do you know what? For some people, this actually might become demotivating. Because? Because you have a guarantee what will happen. You have a full guarantee what will happen. It will happen. This is how it will be. I just discovered that if I would know that I will smoothly achieve my goals and let's say by the end of the year, I am totally rich and I achieved everything and I know it now, somehow I'm like, what am I striving for? I think uh, there is a certain level of uncertainty that keeps us going. Yes, apparently for you, Tobias, there is not really that much uncertainty inside your comfort zone. If you just manage to embrace it and see it as something that will 
allow you to have more motivation to strive more for your business is actually something good. No, I really am thinking right now about this, like what if we suddenly get a guarantee for everything in our life? Would there be anything to strive for or fight for? That would actually probably be quite depressive, right? Because it would be quite depressive if because I just have had that golden thought because it also allows you opportunities. Not everything will turn out exactly as you planned. Revelation. Sometimes it can take you to a totally different place. Uncertainty is scary, but also phenomenal because when you cannot figure out everything, when you don't have guarantees, you can end up anywhere in a good place, in a bad place, in a fantastic place. And I think it's it. This is the magic of life. This is that enchantment element. And I hope Tobias would be able to see it. Yeah, Tobias. So basically embrace that golden thought from Anna really spent some time with that thought uh, that uh, this uncertainty is actually something that keep us going in life and certainty of everything is actually a place where we could potentially even get depressed and you know think about it embrace it the reality is that life is about growing and that means transformation and that means that you will have to leave the things behind and here of course you can make a similar exercise as you did in this in saying goodbye to your boss where you simply write down all that you have been grateful and all that you have learned in your life until now and how that served you well and then write down why it's time to leave it behind and why do you actually have to say goodbye to it and move on and hopefully that will be a nice ritual for you of saying goodbye to your old life and moving to a new life of course there is also a few more layers to it because there is also a certain amount of your probably old beliefs that no longer serve you. There is probably a bit of a fear that you have to leave behind. Uh, so there is quite a lot of things. We don't know that much about uh, other things in your life. But in general, it is time in your life to say goodbye to your old self and welcome the new you. So that's something that we wanted to highlight here. And we wanted to uh, tell you also that to make it all not that scary, not like you have to leave everything behind you. It's a nice thing to have one routine that you can keep from your old life to your new life if you feel that would be comforting for you. So maybe every morning you have a nice cup of coffee or a nice cup of tea. You can embrace that routine and that can be your own personal comfort zone that it's not like your entire life has to go now you know to the goodbye world and you have to go into something new think about a ritual that still serves you something that you do every day and that can be your you know your own safe place no matter which job or new company you can have your own personal safe space in a ritual rituals are really great and if you have something like that and you can keep it, that's great. If you don't have it, you can start developing it right now in your transition. So it's going to be your transition ritual. But if you have had something like that and it serves you, it's something that you can keep with you and it uh, serves you no matter in your old life or in your new life. That's something that can keep you at least internally in your head, in your inner comfort zone, so to speak because that's the most important zone and that's the most difficult one to get. Now it's time to move on to saying hello. Yes. Because that's actually the more exciting part. And that's actually the one that uh, probably Tobias is looking uh, forward to. He wants to finally get that resignation form signed by the boss and moving on to the more exciting part. And the first hello that we have is saying hello to your shyness. And that may sound a little bit weird because probably most of the people would like to say goodbye to their shyness because that's probably something that has not served them very well in their life. Well, first of all, it would be good to figure out if you are really a shy person or maybe you're just an introvert. Sometimes we confuse shy people, introvert people and socially awkward people. <laughs> that could be three different things. So 
first yes, sometimes of course, they are all the same person yeah but first of all it would of course be good to figure out are you really shy or maybe you're just simply an introvert a person that loads your batteries uh, that when you're alone but in general if you are a shy person that is a part of you that you can embrace you can integrate and live with it very well yeah because i think the worst thing that we can do <coughs> excuse me <what? coughs> where did that come from because i think that the worst thing that we can do is to deny who we really are first of all i think that shyness is manageable but i think that this will be something that we will discuss in the fourth question that marta just is showing me right now on the computer but i think one of the biggest and we had the discussions with marta one of the biggest mistakes we do we don't like the parts of us that we perceive as negative so for instance i'm shy that sucks you know or um i don't know um I'm jealous or sometimes I am uh, aggressive or angry and we try to like shovel it under the carpet, you know, that this is an ugly part of me when in reality this is still you and Marta actually can talk for hours about this but that's why I think it's really important to embrace yourself as a whole and then when you do that you will be able to work with it in a healthy way because if you are trying to push it away like or or self shame yourself with that i'm shy i suck i cannot do it then uh, i i think it's it's the very old battle you versus you it's like you are shaming yourself you are fighting with yourself it's it just it will not work yeah i, I actually want to back that up you know um you you kind of have to accept all aspects of who you are even the negative aspects uh, because you know that's just part of you and you can't try to suppress them or overlook them and uh, I think that might even make it worse in time you know because then it's a battle against yourself and you kind of start maybe hating yourself um so so you kind of have to acknowledge okay maybe I am actually a shy person um what does that mean acknowledge it um and and try to think about you know how can I live my life? How can I make this? I live with shyness. Shyness doesn't live with me, you know, it's me. That's first and foremost, you know, it's not shyness that should be in control of me. You know, it's me that's in control of shyness. But I do, I am maybe shy, maybe I'm depressed, maybe I have anxiety. Then it would always be there. It would always be part of you. But you kind of have to acknowledge that it is there and because then you can figure out and accept it you know acceptance is the first step to towards uh, change or development i think you know? Lasse, that you. was super wise that was very good Lasse. thank you for sharing that reflection with us and i would say that acknowledging embracing mm -hmm. and integrating that part of you is very often an entry to healing so very often you can actually heal that part of yourself so that you can actually reach a level where it is no longer such a big part of you. Yeah. So there is a possibility. I would definitely try to figure out where is that shyness coming from? Because sometimes a shyness can be caused by some uh, circumstances or some events in your life and you may be able to get there and heal it so it is possible that shyness can be circumstantial it can be something that has happened in your life that when has you're a kid or something yeah, yeah that has driven that shyness into you so there is definitely some part of shyness that you can heal but it could be that it's a part of your personality it could be that is something that uh, you are just not such a greatly outgoing person and you know thank god because imagine that every single person is totally self-confident freaking shying uh, lion we wouldn't be even able to communicate if everyone would like to like show off let me tell you about everything i think all exactly. the time exactly. <laughs> from everybody <laughs> we, we need shy people we need confident people we need easygoing people we need a little bit reserved people that's the whole beauty of the experience of being a human and interacting with others yeah. i would definitely point out you know if you have listened to us for a while you know that we think a lot about things that limit us in life and limiting beliefs is something that really does not serve us so if you are 
like telling yourself you're a shy person, you can be building up on this one. And it could be something that is really not uh, serving you. So I just wanted to highlight it here. We can link to some other of the articles uh, on our website. So you'll be able to find your challenge. Tobias, we will talk a little bit more about those uh, limiting beliefs in the written version of the challenge. Um, I also want to say something um, about the acceptance part that I think is for me is something that has helped me a bit is mm -hmm. that find someone you really know and trust and actually say it out loud to them. You know, I, I've been having this feeling of anxiety or depression and it's actually been something that's been with me for many years. And well, well I've just given an example, you mm -hmm. know, but find someone you really trust and say it out loud to them just to say it, you know, because for me, that's part of the acceptance part. If you have something you really struggle with, saying it out loud actually helps because then it's not something you just keep inside and has something you have in your head all the time. But that's just, just something I have found helpful for me in my life. Yeah, I think it's a very good point, you know. It's a good idea. It's a big part of self-acceptance mm -hmm. mm -hmm. to be able to say to, to say it to someone else, because often when we dislike a part of ourselves and we try to get rid of it uh, we can either continue like saying it so it's our excuse that's one coping mechanism where mm. we just use it as an excuse i'm shy i'm shy i'm shy or we can be like you know holding it within and not even you know saying anything about it and when we are in a social situation we just try to talk so much so that mm. no one notices so it depends what kind of mechanism that you have been running to cope with that but it could be that if your mechanism was like to deny it mm. and uh, get rid of it then it could be that admitting it and talking about it to a good person, someone you trust. Yeah, at least that's a method that has been working for me. You mm -hmm. know, when I've had uh, issues, you know, I have, I'm, I suspect I have milder anxiety, and I actually I don't mind talking about this because that's how I get through it. I have no reason to hide it. A lot of people go around with uh, all their issues, but maybe never talk about them because they feel it's a taboo. And in this case, you know. It's uh, a big part of it is uncertainty, you know, about taking that leap into the unknown and it could be maybe be very scary. Um, and then if you feel like you struggle also with shyness on top of that, for me, what has helped, it's actually talking about it. And, and the starting is the acceptance part for me has been saying it out loud to someone I really trust, because then it's like I'm acknowledging it. And then it's like, OK, I have this thing. Then what can I do now? That's. That's and just what really, I say for me, you know, the, that's helped me. And it's really, really great because when you say it in this way and you acknowledge, you take the responsibility mm. back yeah, and yeah. then you are the one who has the power over it. It's not like it's, it was a great way you said it. It's like I live with shyness, mm. not shyness lives, with, lives me. with me. Yeah. yeah. So it's a really great way of taking yeah. back your power. Lasa, can I ask you, the person you were talking to, was it uh, your close person or was it maybe someone? Because I'm also wondering from this point of view, uh, some people may not have a person mm. to talk to or maybe they still have some kind of a taboo uh, in their head. But sometimes it's good to talk to someone that you don't know. Mm. Like, uh, I don't know, a counselor, coach, mentor. Bec look, we get people, people's challenges, and we don't know those people many times. Mm. So um, we, c I can see that maybe for some people it would be easier to talk with someone that is not personally attached. How was it in your case? Was it someone you knew? Well, well actually, I, I started with a psychiatrist, to be okay. honest. Okay, so it was a, then it was a neutral person. It wasn't... Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. but, but that was... That was kind of like, uh, for me, that was like the big hurdle I had to get over, was actually also saying it to someone I hadn't met before. Felt kind of like a, a little getting out of my comfort zone. Of course. But once I've said it to someone, then I actually, you know, then I thought, well, now I can talk with my brother or sister about it maybe. And I kind of have a feeling they always had that, like an idea, but saying it out loud is actually really liberating, um, you know, so. So, so maybe, yeah, maybe if you don't feel like you have a person you know super well, you can tell it to, yeah, maybe finding like a neutral person and and, and talk with them mm -hmm. to begin with, you know, just to get over that hurdle, you know. 
yeah. of talking about it. This could be also a preparation for a next step when you actually can open up for the for uh, in front of the people that are close mm. to you, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. It was really beautiful. Thank you for sharing uh, those uh, reflections. Yeah, that's awesome. You know, yeah. it's like you know, there's uh, nothing to be ashamed about. You know, yeah. every person have something they struggle with. But last, it takes still courage. You know, to 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 say it. So thanks a lot. It's uh, extremely. I'm I'm really touched right now. I think my brain unfroze completely. <laughs> Thank you for that. No, really, awesome, awesome job, Lasse. Mm. It's not scripted, guys. It's happening live. So Tobias, you have now heard a lot of our reflections about shyness and why it's important to actually embrace it and how embracing it can actually give you your power to deal with it and live it uh, and live with it and uh, when it comes to your concerns about being a shy person who has to reach out to build up a network reach mm -hmm. out to clients i have a little advice for you that when you're a shy person and you find it difficult to get like a small talk going with uh, with people that you don't know well what works really well is to approach the person with curiosity I thought that imagine that the other person is naked, that I've heard also works. I'm not sure, maybe some people can get distracted if they see someone attractive naked, but maybe that's uh, that's a tip as well. But what works really well is when you're shy, nervous, anxious or anything like that, something that is disturbing you internally in your communication with other people, you put a lot of attention to yourself. If you decide to leave yourself out for a moment and get curious about the other person, you put your attention out of your inner discomfort into the other person. And if you approach that person with curiosity and you ask that person questions like a sincere, how are you? Where are you from? Like really simple questions, but asked with that curiosity, not to just say anything uh, so that people don't realize that I'm shy, but like really, you know, I have this opportunity to establish a network. I have this opportunity to talk to a potential client. I'm just going to talk to them and have a few like really simple questions ready that will allow you to be in that position of a curious interrogator. Yeah, I think it's a it's an empathic interaction when you are actually focusing also on another human being. Another thing I would like to just mention is that you can practice that. It gets better. I know some of my friends that were shy. I think I mentioned in one of our episodes before, they were really shy with girls and they started to practice just talking with girls without no agenda of this has to be my girlfriend or I need to, I don't know, score her. Just talking with girls and they said when I started to talk with girls I started to feel more you build up that confidence it's like mm -hmm. a muscle you train it so I think that practice is also a great thing in the end of the day uh, I, I think it can be slowly overcome but I still will say that the first thing is is actually to accept it say hello to your shyness and Tobias we will have another episode for you yes. uh, as we still are um, uh, we still have a way to go to talk about saying hello to your self-confidence and saying hello to the trust there is still a lot to say about that so we will have another episode ready for you so yeah, it takes a bit of the time for you, Tobias, to get a full answer from us. But I hope that you are benefiting from yeah. all the reflections and all the deeper dialogue. That no, we I, have I have to say, guys, that for me, this uh, episode is magic. I love the way we all connected and I love how Lasse shared his experience. And I think that this is this will be really beneficial for all of our uh, listeners. So. Thank you for listening to us and uh, Tobias, you will have to listen to us again on Monday. Which will be a pure pleasure. Bye. Bye bye. bye. You are listening to You've Got 5 Options show. Remember that we are on air every Monday, Wednesday and every second Friday. Remember that you can visit our website www.you'vegot5options.com That is www.y-o-u-v-e-g-o-t-5-as-a-number-options.com
where you can submit your challenge and find our podcast. You can also find us on iTunes or any podcast app. Du lytter til din lokale radio i Aarhus på FM 98,7 MHz og 89,5 MHz.